Hello, everyone. I want to talk today a little bit about algorithms, but uh, I spent 20, over 20 years in the institutional trading world, and I used algorithms every day. And now that I'm trying to teach retail traders or newer traders or traders and investors, I found out that there's a lot of myths about what really goes on on Wall Street and uh, what these things are. So let me just talk about an algorithm. An algorithm is neither good nor bad. An algorithm is a tool. Just like a carpenter would use a hammer, <clears throat> a trader would use an algorithm. An algorithm is just a computerized program to execute trades. Now, what could be like the easiest example of an algorithm? All right, well, I could say, I could program my algorithm to buy 10% of the volume of a stock over the course of the day. So if a million shares trades, I'll buy 100,000. If 100,000 shares trades, I'll buy 10,000. So that's really about the simplest. They can get more sophisticated. Now, my background is primarily as a micro cap and small cap equity trader. Micro cap and small cap equity trading, there are issues with liquidity. In other words, I might get an order to buy 100,000 shares of something and maybe only 5,000 have traded on the day. So that's gonna be a hard trade to do. Now, say the last trade was a 10. I could type in my algorithm to say, if I could buy all 100,000 shares at 10, go ahead and do it, right? Don't mess around, don't try to get a better price, just try to get the order. Liquidity is more important than the price in this situation. So now here's the thing, there are good algorithms and there are bad algorithms. And you might be saying like, what does that mean? Well, I don't mean good and bad in terms of like morality, <laughs> but uh, good and bad in terms of how well they work. Now. Algorithms are provided to hedge funds and institutional money managers by algorithm providers, and these are typically your broker dealers. They all have their own algorithms that they want you to use because they want to get the liquidity into their systems. Now, there's probably 60 or 70 different venues where things could trade, all right? You've got the New York Stock Exchange, you've got all these dark pools and private exchanges, alternative trading systems. So some algorithms are hooked into all these things and some aren't. Now, I had an algorithm that I used by a company or from Bank of America, I mean, sorry, Bank of New York, and it was really good. If I said buy all 100,000 shares, the shares would just start coming in. I had another algorithm that I used from a different firm, that's a firm called Whedon that's no longer around, and their algorithms basically sucked. It didn't get anything done. I could put in the same order, I could put in the same order, if possible, buy all 100,000 shares at 10 on the Bank of New York one, and all of a sudden the shares just start coming in, right? I could put the same exact order or the same exact parameters on Whedon and nothing happens. Now, why is that? Well, like I said, we have all these different venues and various algorithms are hooked into these different venues. So the more venues they're hooked into, the more liquidity you'll be able to access. If there's a seller on a particular venue or dark pool out there, and I'm using the algorithm that's not linked to that venue, well, then my order is not going to get executed. If my order or if my algorithm is linked to that, uh, is linked to that venue, well, then my order will get exit, will get done. So there's good algorithms and bad algorithms, again, not in terms of morality, but in terms of how useful they are. And a big part of it has to do with which venues they are, uh, are attached to or which venues that they are linked to. Now, you might say, well, that sounds a little strange. Why aren't they all linked? Well, because these different venues compete against each other. And sometimes they're, they're uh, you know, sometimes they're friends with each other. For example, like Goldman Sachs is a broker. They may have an algorithm that all their clients use, but maybe they don't want Morgan Stanley to be hooked into their algorithm because Morgan Stanley is a competitor. So the reality is, in the trading world, when you send out an order on one of these algorithms, you really kind of don't know where it goes, to be perfectly blunt. You could buy 10,000 shares and you could be buying them all on 50 different venues, depending on how linked your algorithm is. Um, other examples of algorithms could be, all right, buy 10% of the volume, but if the stock goes down by 5%, let's step it up to 20%. I mean, it's basically the the examples or the possibilities are pretty much limitless. But I think it's kind of funny when I hear people say like, oh, the algos are taking it up. Oh, the algos are selling it down. 
Well, it's like saying, oh, uh, you know, the, the carpenter is using a hammer to drive in a nail. Well, of course, algorithms are tools that people use, that traders use to get trades executed. When you put in an order with your broker, I would almost guarantee you that it's going into one of their algorithms. So that's it, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot. Hopefully you'll join our YouTube community here, Stock Market Jobber, and I will talk to you soon.